This is a ridiculously stacked weekend in HBCU college football. You have games getting national attention. You have rivalry games, games that could decide a conference. And who doesn't love homecomings? Also, the regional rankings for the D2 playoffs have been announced. How many HBCUs are in that 10? Oh, yeah, it's Locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, aka the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over, it just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Do not forget the S on the end in today's episode of locked on hbcu is brought to you by bet online they have you covered this season with more odds props and lines than ever before you see it right there on the bottom of the screen if you're looking at youtube if not you know bet online they've been here for a while and this is a peculiar weekend because there's games or weeks when there's a lot of really good games there's weeks when there's a lot of important games but this is a peculiar weekend because it feels like it has everything you want. If you want rivalry games, we can do that. You want games that are going to get national attention? We can do that. You want games that are just about fun, a.k.a. homecoming? Well, it depends on who your homecoming is. That, that, we'll get into that in segment two. But y'all know we got it all. This is a stacked weekend. I think we have great homecomings. I think that we have important games, and I think we have rivalry games. We're not going to talk about Jackson State versus Southern because that's our game of the week. That's obviously going to be reserved for our Friday episode, but we are going to break down everything else because we still have the Magic City Classic. You still have that, and for me, that's the, that's the biggest story. That's going to be our lead um, game for this segment. We're going to have two segments breaking this down. Each segment is going to have a lead game, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the others as well. Uh, but this is the lead game because... Alabama A&M has been hot, and I wanted to talk about how they've been heating up. And to me, this presented a perfect opportunity to really discuss it because they are in the midst of a bunch of stacked games, but they are, as an individual team, in the midst of a three-game winning streak. And one that they really started heating up the week before. They lost their first four games of the season. However, the first three compared to the last four, significantly different, specifically from the offensive side of the ball. When you're looking at their first three games, right? The first three games, they get blown out. They only score 20 points total throughout the whole three games. They had a shutout, or they were shut out. Then they scored 17 in one game, and they scored three in another game. That's not good, right? So you have 20 points total in the mat, in the span of three weeks. Since then, they haven't scored less than 25 in a game. They scored 25 the next week versus FAMU, and after that, they're in the 30s. The offense has really gotten, gotten it rolling, and the reason I say that the heat up has started a week prior to them actually winning is because, A, you see the score. They actually put points on the board, but then also because they started, they had, they started off hot against FAMU, and they were winning. They had to get a comeback put on them, so we're not looking at a scene that was just getting beat down. Before that, they were just getting beat down. Against FAMU, you kind of feel like they lost something. Then they had the little spat at, at a, uh, midfield between Coach Maynard and Coach Simmons. And possibly, we're seeing that be the catalyst for a little bit more fight in the team. Because now the team's putting it together. And since then, they've been on fire. 37, 35, 34. They're putting up 30 points every time. Nearly five touchdowns a game. And if you put the average out, they are averaging over 35 points a game over the last three weeks. Offensively, they've really put it together. You know? defensively it's another story and that's where you're going to try to exploit if you're Alabama State but we're not really going to talk about them because I just want to identify I know we're talking about the game but we're talking about one storyline within the game and that's Alabama A&M's heating up offensively 
Defensively, you got to get them together, man. You can't allow one side of the ball, or excuse me, you can't allow the running or the passing game to go off every game. It kind of, they pick between which one they want to go off and the opponent goes off. You got to be able to be more stout against the pass and the run. You want to be able to stop both of them, but how? But when you're just looking at it, you got to stop at least something. You can't require your offense to put up 30 points last uh, every year, every game. That's what you did last year, and you can't allow that to happen again. Um, then the other games that we really look at, Virginia Union versus Chowan is a major game this weekend. This will decide who wins the CIAA, or at least that division. Because as amazing of a season as Virginia Union has had this year, as dominant as Jada Byers has been this year, they could crash and burn and lose it all in one week. In 60 minutes of action, the previous seven, eight games, it doesn't matter anymore because they just lost to Chowan, and that likely means they won't be in the CIAA championship. I just don't think Chowan's going to lose the next game after that. And by losing to Chowan, you lose your lead with one week left. It would hurt me to see such dominance, some dominance, such success be put to the just kind of be put to bed because you had one bad game. That's rough. That's rough. But this is do or die for both teams. Chowan doesn't win. Chowan ain't going nowhere either. Chowan loses, they can wrap up their season. It's over with. You know, I think Virginia Union could lose and it, you know, it kind of depends. But I, I definitely feel as if if Chowan loses, it's done for them, right? Then um, you're looking at Tuskegee versus Kentucky State and Fayetteville State versus Shaw. Those are two very similar games in the sense that Fayetteville and Tuskegee both have two game leads on Shaw and Kentucky State. Now, if you win, they could both lose this game and still win the next week and win the division. But if they win this week, Fayetteville State and Kentucky, excuse me, Fayetteville State and Tuskegee are going to be your divisional champions, and they have written their ticket into the conference championship. So that's what they both have on the line. It's very interesting. It's very fun. We still have more games to break down, and we're going to go into our homecoming section, including the greatest homecoming on earth, which is the most important one this week, and then also the homecoming I'll be at, because you know what it is with me. Before I get into that, however, I would love to tell you about Sweat Block, and I have a message from our good friend Pamela. Pamela is a actual customer review on Sweat Block, and she was talking about how she would hide in office bathrooms to wipe her to wipe her arms so she didn't want anybody else to see the circles. So what does she do? She goes and gets Sweat Block, and now her problems are solved. Pamela said, you know what? I'm tired of hiding in the office bathroom, taking up so much time. I have to stay here 30, 40 extra minutes because I've been hiding in the bathroom. I can't do my work. That's man. I want to go home. So in order to be able to go home on time, she decided to get sweat block. And with sweat block, you no longer have to worry about those embarrassing stains. You go ahead and get the wipes. And those wipes have been tested by firefighters on the Rachel Ray show. It's, it's perfect for you. And it keeps the embarrassing moment away. Rather be pro proactive than reactive, right? So go ahead and get you Sweatblock today at sweatblock.com and make sure you use the promo code Locked On for 20% off your offer. You can also find this on Amazon. As we keep on rolling on today's episode of Locked On HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen of the day, make sure you're checking out Locked On Sports Today with all of the great news, all of the biggest stories from around the nation very quickly with good friend Peter B. I've been on the show a couple of times, so run it up when I'm there and run it up when I'm not there. But I appreciate it. First, let me give you the word of the day before we get into our second segment. And today's word of the day is peculiar, which describes people and things that are different from the usual or normal. This weekend is quite peculiar. We talked about the major games. You have games with big time ramifications. Now you got games with big time festivities. Let's get into our homecoming games because there are games. Actually, there's kind of an overlap here. If we're doing a Venn diagram and one side was the homecoming fun and one was games that had big ramifications, the first game we're going to break down would probably fit in the middle. And that's the greatest homecoming on earth or the greatest homecoming on earth, which is North Carolina a and homecoming every year. And this year they'll be going against Campbell. That game has a lot of stakes. It's more than just fun. This is a game that I'm not going to say is going to decide the Big South, but there are three currently undefeated teams in the Big South as far as conference records go, and that's 2-0. and And that's Campbell, Gardner-Webb, and North Carolina a and See, this is the third time that Campbell has faced an, an HBCU this year. And also, it's the biggest one. 
Hopefully, I never have to talk about Campbell again. I hope we never speak about Campbell again. And the only time I possibly talk about Campbell is when I'm talking about how North Carolina a and has to keep them at bay. Other than that, I don't want to talk about Campbell. I really don't. But this is the last time that I have to. I, I have to do it because this game has such ramifications. And it's fun because we just saw them go against Jackson State just a week prior. Just a week prior. There's no comparison here. I, North Carolina a and and Jackson State aren't going to see each other. So there's no need to really really compare it for real. Um, but overall, a and is going to want to run the ball. And that's what Jackson State excelled at last week. I know that Tootin is going to have way more attention than Wilkerson had, but you still got to look at it and say, you know what? That's what I do. That happened to you last week. I'm going to I'm going to assume that I'm a better running team than Jackson State. That's what I would do. I was like, I got Tootin. I got the better running back. This is my bread and butter. I have to make sure I do this. Then, of course, the pressure is going to go to Jalen Fowler because when you look at Jackson State, everybody knows they want to pass. Everybody knows that. Yeah, they're going to run, but everybody knows they want to pass. And if you want to stop them, you're going to want to stop the pass first. It's the reverse of that for North Carolina ANC. Everybody knows they want to run. So the same way that the running game had to step up for Jackson State, the passing game is going to have to do the well, do the same as well. Excuse me. So that's why I'm looking at both Tootin and Fowler. I predict that Tootin still gets 100 yards. I think the running game is going to work. I think that they can run on them the same way that Jackson State ran on them. And that should be really fun to watch. Um... Also, the linebacking duo. We didn't talk about them last week, but you got Taekwon King, Jacob Roberts. This is a really good running, I mean, linebacker duo. I love it. I love it because I love linebacker plays. So I enjoy watching them because it's really exciting to watch them play football, especially King, man. He'd be flying all the way around. He'd been jumping, he's been jumping out a lot more this season from the games I've been watching. So we'll see if that continues. But they ain't the only homecoming that's out here. FAMU has their homecoming. If you're into festivities, right? If we're just here to talk about festivities because their game doesn't hold hold the same significance, right? This is about fun. They got Lotto coming out. Uh, you know, I don't know where y'all stand on Lotto. I like Lotto. She cool to me. But I ain't going to be at FAMU's homecoming either. TSU already had their concert. But, um, yeah, so she'll be out there. They'll be playing their game against UAPB if you want to get the sports because this is a sports podcast, right? Um, <laughs> I think Isaiah Land will return. He did return to practice. For the first time since the South Carolina State game. I think he's going to return. I, I I don't know. My gut isn't sure. If he doesn't come back this week, I'm pretty sure he's coming back next week. But he did return to practice this week. So we'll see. He's been dealing with some injuries. And, man, you just hope he wants to get right. Or you hope he gets right because you know he has NFL aspirations. And I also think he could be a mid-round pick if he comes back and finishes the season healthy. If he doesn't, it's going to be hard to sell it, man. Then also, TSU and PV. Why do we keep doing this? Why do we keep putting the homecoming on the same week? What if I want to go to both? I mean, I don't now. But, like, when I was out there, they did that a couple of times. Stop doing that. Stop having homecoming on the same week, TSU and PV. I don't know who is scheduling this. They met a whole Houston, like, everybody was at homecoming. TSU at homecoming. I think UH got homecoming. Uh, I think Rice has homecoming. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if Sam Houston had homecoming about an hour away, too. Like, this is ridiculous, but stop doing this. Stop doing it. TSU is facing Lincoln, California. Uh, PV is facing Bethune-Cookman. It should be fun. I'll only be at one of them. However, this is a lot of homecomings, man. And PV always throws a great homecoming. You know, I was able to go up there, I think, like one year. Um, I think I think I only had like two opportunities. But I went up there one of those years. I stayed with my homecoming most times. But anyway, um, TSU, homecoming going to be jumping. I think that homecoming was great last year. So I hope we build up on that. And then also, like I said, PV is always great. So you have FAMU, who's always going to be great. TSU is always going to be great. PV always going to be great. And then the greatest homecoming on earth, the name says it all, in addition to it being a high-profile game. This is a stacked weekend, and it just continues and continues. But let's stop looking towards the future on Saturday, and let's look towards the future even farther in advance, and let's look towards the D2 playoffs. The regional rankings have been unveiled for the first time this week, and it's a little interesting spin that I want to see if you catch while I'm listing them off. As we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, we are going to talk about these D2 playoff rankings and just a quick breakdown for those who don't know how the D2 playoffs work, right? So there's 28 teams and there's four regions. So you're going to have seven uh, teams per region, but that's not what's going to be in this ranking. In this ranking, you're going to have 10 teams. They're going to have a couple of rankings just so that you know what teams are around where. 
and that's what this first this is the first of that right so there's 10 rankings only seven teams can make it but all hbcu d2 schools are in the same region so you will never see an hbcu versus hbcu national championship it's just not possible obviously because two teams can't make it out the same region it's the playoffs you know it's just think march madness um but yeah so they're both in region two the ciaa and the siac but <clears throat> you could win the conference and not make it i don't know if that's ever happened but it could happen, right? Because there's no automatic bid. So technically, like let's just say that the conference winner was just like trash. And it's just a lot of good teams in other conferences. You could not make it. Once again, I don't know if that's ever happened, but it could happen. Now, I want to read to you these 10 teams in order. One, Albany State. Two, Benedict. Three, Delta State. Four, Fort Valley. Five, Lenore Rhine. Six, Newsbury. Seven, Tusculum. 8, Virginia Union, 9, West Florida, 10, Wingate. Now, there's four HBCUs on that list, but did you notice anything interesting? If you listen to the actual order they were in, that's strange. Because I'm sitting there looking like, well, what is Albany State doing above Benedict? Why is Virginia Union so low? Why are they at 8? Mind you, only 7 teams can make it. So that means they wouldn't make the playoffs. And I'm sitting here having a, I don't even think I threw a fit. I think I just, man, get this out of my face. I got it off of Twitter, man. I, I was just like, man, get it out of here. Because this is on the D2 football website. This wasn't some random. No, this was on the D2 football website. When I saw that Albany State was above Benedict, and then I saw Virginia Union was all the way at eight, which means they wouldn't make the playoffs, I said, man. And I don't know why I, why I read the comments. I'm not even a big comment reader. Um, I'm getting. I'm growing into being a comment reader because they'd be hilarious. But I'm not even a big comment reader, but I read this time. And somebody was like, bro, what the heck? Da, 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 da. And somebody said, and then the D2 football Twitter page said, read the first sentence. So I, I go back and I read the first sentence. And these things are listed alphabetically. And you would have noticed that, you know what I'm saying? If you just pay attention, maybe put it together. I didn't put it together on first listen. Shout out to you if you did. Because now I just felt like I was slow. I was like, why didn't I read the first one? But yes, so this is not the actual order. Next week, they will tell you what the actual order is and mind you this is not concrete this is just it's a fluid list until it's finally final when the playoffs start but if i was so i can't tell you how many hbcus are going to make it let's get that out of the way right now because it's 10 teams not even in order right now but i do know that four are in the mix if you are in the top 10 you are in the mix so there's four hbcus in the mix last year only two made it Two are going to make it this year, I believe. Um, three might make it. Three might make it. But Virginia Union and Benedict, in my opinion, are probably fighting hard for the first team, for the first spot. If we're just talking about ranking HBCUs, they're probably fighting hard for that first one. I don't know if either one has a big edge on the other. It's kind of about what you value. I'm going to side towards Union because I know in the FBS is a lot of times who you beat when you beat them. So, like, who was this team when you knocked them off? Valdosta State was the number three team in the nation. They haven't had a great season, but they were the number three team in the nation when Virginia Union knocked them off. So that's a huge victory. But then you look at Benedict, they've knocked off Albany State and Fort Valley. So they knocked off two teams who are in this top 10 ranking. I don't know how you want to weigh it. For me, I sided with Union because of that high number one. I went with the highest of highs, which was knocking off the number three team in the nation. But if you want to go with two quality wins amongst this particular top 10, I can't I can't be mad at you. But either way, they're one and two right now. I'm going to go Virginia Union one. I'm going to go Albany State, excuse me, Benedict College number two. Not by much, very slight. And then I'm going to go Albany and Fort Valley. The thing is, these two teams still have to play. They're not both going to make it. One of them is going to get eliminated, at least one. Let's just say both of them win next week or this week. They're going to have to play each other next week. Only the winner is going to make this playoffs if either one of them makes it. That's it. <clears throat> Excuse me. That being said, Virginia Union could lose to Chowin. I hope that's not the case. I actually want to see Jada Bias and Union in the playoffs. This is extremely exciting to me, and I want to see him hit 2,000 yards. So, <laughs> and I think he's, he should be pretty close to it. Um, I know he's almost at the school record of 1660 rushing. I don't know how many yards he has receiving, though. But anyway, that's my, that's my rankings. Union. Benedict, Albany State, Fort Valley State. 
That's my four, and I think that three of them make it because I do think that Union wins, and I think that whoever wins between Fort Valley and Albany State is going to make it. We'll see next week exactly where this is. All I know is Virginia Union better not be under seven. They better not, especially if they beat Chowin. But I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day. Every day tomorrow we'll be back with the game of the week, Jackson State versus Southern on college game day so you know i'm excited for this i gotta show out for a game that's gonna be nationally or it's not gonna be nationally televised but the pregame will be nationally televised now for your second listen of the day make sure you're checking out peter b and all of the hosts that he brings on to locked on sports today to talk about the biggest stories every single day in the meantime in between time if you're looking for me you can find me on twitter at south exclusives until the next time that we hear each other family take care stay blessed peace